surrounded by a variety of objects some of the objects like all some of the of some of these different objects that you see in these in this image are made from a uh, number of different materials like some of them are made from plastics some of them are made using iron or other metals some of them are being made using rubber getting it some of them are being made using clothes which one is made using clothes in the following image a uh, backpack hmm. and uh, hmm. a pouch pencil case yeah pouch pencil case good right now or here yeah. we, we have one more example of object starter being made up of fiber huh? plant fiber you guys understand the plant fiber I'm not using the exact word. I'm using the word plant fiber. You know the wood pulp that we obtain from the plants to make paper. Wood pulp, yes, right now. So that wood pulp is basically a fiber. Now it's a fibrous book. substance. Exactly. So I'm talking about papers. So notebooks, books, etc. Yes. Okay, Halima, you also turn your camera on in the class, right? So we observe that, uh, like. Uh, also you can observe some of the objects are made up of wood also list the objects that are made up of wood here uh made up of wood a desk chair desk and chair particularly right now good so thereby we see that the materials different materials around us are made up of different uh, materials different objects different objects are made up of different materials right and all these objects have got different properties and different uses huh? like a paper like the notebook is different from a desk because both of them are made up of from different yeah. materials right or like this rubber is different from this backpack or this pencil sharpener because they have been made from different materials right now yeah that is the first thing another thing you can observe here that some of the objects here would be shinier some of them would be having a dull appearance like for example like look at the glass used in this calculator for example or the blades of the scissor hmm? right they would be usually having some luster would be shiny as compared to the desk or compared to the backpack right now some of the objects are lustrous meaning that they have a shiny appearance Okay, do tell me what difference would you fe feel when you touch a desk or a rubber? Upon uh, touch, desks hmm. are like you know they're kind of you know like smooth when you touch them, but hmm. in a rubber, it's you know when you try to like touch it, uh, you have to it gets stuck at one point. You have to like uh, like uh, the table is like more smooth than a rubber. Okay. Not basically about smoothness, but when you were to press it, you try to squeeze it. Which one of the two you'd be able to squeeze it easily? A rubber. Rubber, no? So rubber is generally soft, right? And you'd be able to squeeze it, squeeze it easily, bend it easily, right? Okay. So thereby, the different objects that we see over here, they have different properties and they are made up of separate materials, right? Okay. Also, for the ease of studying them, they have to be grouped together. Like if we have to group the objects given here on the basis of the source of material, say I'm asking you to group them into two categories, like the one that is made from natural objects like wood and another one you have to classify that they are made from artificial substances like plastic so based on that if i were to ask you you have to classify them how you would be classifying them first of all the natural objects the objects that would be made from natural materials that would be desk, taken from the chair, nature hmm. uh, desk, rubber, chair, rubber uh, notebooks books 
So about notebooks and books, even uh, the cover of the notebooks and books, uh, some may be made of artificial thing. Uh, but majorly the paper, it's a, it's a national object book, you know. Yeah. So in a general sense, we can take uh, take this to be an example. Um, okay, no? uh, pencils, color pencil. Uh, that too can be taken right now because pencil, uh, it in in it They're graphite, wood. wood and yeah. graphite lead is used in this right now. Okay, and yes, Salima, what Should about the color pencils as well, right? Yeah, color pencils also. Yeah, this Some, one. Uh, pins and clips. Hmm. So pins, clips, staplers, scissors, compass, ball points. Yeah, in fact, the one that we haven't circled, all of them would be are basically made up of artificial substances, right? Now, kind of yes. basically using plastic or using metals, right? So, uh, also backpack is also a natural thing, right? It's made up of cloth. Yeah, like backpacks are also different types. Like some of them would be made using the natural fiber, oh, like the natural clothes. Some of them would be made of synthetic. So in a general sense, usually nowadays we find that backpacks. Uh, earlier it used to be particular, but particularly it was made using the leather of the uh, animals, right? Or like wool also in some cases, or uh, cotton also. But now it is mostly it is synthetic. So here we have we have been able to classify them, separate them, separate the different objects based on the materials. Uh, they were made up of right now. So we had used some criteria here. Based on that criteria, we were able to group them, right now. Furthermore, yes, we'll be able to group them in other ways also. We would be able to group them in other ways also, right? Yes, sir. Okay. If you were to have some more examples, like if in this I were to put some other examples, if I were to put some like medicines in this. Right now, so if I were to put some medicines in into this and some grocery items, like for example, or for example, if I were to put some fruits in this, so now we have got two groups in this. One that is edible, one that is not edible. One that we would be consuming medicines or fruits or vegetables. So then we have got two groups here. Right now, so here we find out yes. that we can group the. Different objects based on some similarities that they are sharing. Right now, medicines and fruits, although they have different appearance, but they share one similarity that both of them are taken up by the humans, consumed by the humans. Right now, got this. So that is one thing. Okay. Furthermore, based on their shape, also you can group them. Like some of them are, would be having. Rounded shape. Some of them would be having a cuboidal shape. Some of them would be having a square shape, rectangle shape, or triangle shape, etc. So based on that, also you can group the different objects here, Halima and uh, Hana. Yes, sir. Right now, so that is one thing. So the one yes, basic sir. thing, how we classify the object is, would be whether they are living thing or non-living thing. So that is the first criteria of. First criteria of classifying objects, that is whether they are living or non-living. Right now, later on we will get to uh, know about some other things also. Like we would be later on learning about how even in the living world, some of them would be sharing some similarities. Then we would be having we group some organisms as reptiles. Some are grouped as mammals. Some are grouped as amphibians. Some are grouped as aquatic. Right now, so furthermore, what I was saying moments ago that based on this criteria that whether they show some life or not, uh, they are classified as living things and non-living things. So, different things that we see around us can be classified as living things, and the another basis would be non-living things. In fact, we did learnt about this previously also. Where we did learnt about the characteristics of the living things. So living things would be showing the following characteristics, like it would be uh, growing, they would be breathing. Hmm? Living things need food. 
they water. feel they need water like them most importantly living things should be reproducing they would be giving birth to the similar kind right now yeah so those are the characteristics of living things that living yeah hold on for it it got discharged actually okay, meanwhile you guys uh, mention the characteristics of the non living things on what basis a given object would be classified as a non living thing uh sir so non living things do not reproduce they do not uh, breathe they do not need food water to survive um they do hmm. not like uh, um they do not breathe yeah very good they do not breathe and most importantly they do not reproduce no yeah getting it so those are the characteristics of non living things so so we have got these following characteristics on the basis of which we have classified them right halima good both of you yes sir so they will neither be reproducing they will neither be able to feel their surrounding they will not Uh, have a uh, have uh, any stimulus they will not be responding to the stimulus right yeah, they will not st eat a stimulus okay like as in the case of living things like in the case of plants or we humans you happen to touch a hot object hot pan you immediately remove your hand right so that's a stimulus you respond to your surrounding you right now you show some movement to your responding okay just like yes. in the case of plants also the leaves of the plants or the branches of the plants would be particularly tilting in that direction from where it would be receiving maximum sunlight okay or uh, we have the examples of touch me not plant like where when you touch its leaves the leaves would be folding so that's a stimulus stimulus could be of different different types huh? it could be due to sunlight due to water due to touch due to heat etc so living things they grow they breathe right and they do respire what is respiration you guys have learned about this respiration they would be basically uh, respiration break. is the breathing inhale no it's slightly different from that okay in general sense we say that that it is generally breathing but in respiration actually what happens the food that you have eaten that is broken down with the help of oxygen to get energy out of it that is what respiration is breathing is the simple act of taking in oxygen rich air okay now but in respiration what happens the food that you have eaten once the food has been completely digested now the only thing that is left to be done is extracting energy out of that digested food so that would be done in respiration with the help of oxygen the food would be broken down finally in the non case of non living things they do not grow no growth is observed in them no reproduction so they do not reproduce they don't have stimulus they don't exactly have... exactly so they do not respond to no no respond to stimuli no movement right they won't show any movement no requirement of food yes. getting it no requirement yes, of food so these are the things also they will not breathe no breathing or respiration no breathing or respiration i said so those are the characteristics of the non living things so hope you have understood this yes okay we are going to be talking about the properties of materials but before that let us get some more concepts clear right now i have been using the term materials moments ago we did use the terms materials huh? so what basically a material is so material would be basically a physical substance that could be used to make different things like there are different things that you would be seeing uh, that you see in the image they have been made out of some physical substance now like the table it would has been made from wood or uh, the backpack it would ha it has been made from the materials like clothes 
right getting it so materials are basically the yes, basically the physical substances that would be used to make things it could be plastic it could be metals it could be glass it could be cloth it could be wood etc and in fact if you were to look around ourselves we we'll see that everything that we are seeing is made up of some materials and sometimes the things can be made up or made out of more than one materials like the take take the example of this stapler this stapler is made up made out of more than one material so it is made up out of plastic and yes, then yes sir and metal and a metal also good so that is one because thing because the stapler pins are made up of metals exactly okay and the holder of the pins it is also made up of the metal so right now we are learning about materials so as i say that a material is a physical substance by the way uh, you guys have to prepare the notes also okay na so you guys have to start preparing notes from here okay na from this topic on onwards start preparing the notes and give the heading of the chapter first of all sorting materials into groups like how do we prepare the notes we have to like keep writing down everything yeah whatever i would be telling down uh, telling you guys to write down that only you have to write down okay all right yes sir also like basically notes are for the purpose of revising the chapter in a short span of time okay so it does not have to be very lengthy in short we have to write down the things okay and wherever required we have to uh, write um, definitions as well okay no well definitions so a material is a physical substance so then do we have to show you the notes and stuff yeah exactly you will be required to show it okay now once you would have prepared the notes of the chapters then you'd have to make a pdf out of it and share it to the team they will share it with me okay yes furthermore we have examples of it like wood as a material metals for example iron copper etc these are the metals not materials thing metals okay then we have example of like glass that is a um, material we have examples of fibers fibers here refers to clothes whether it be cotton wool leather etc right now so these are some of the examples of materials which we have and in fact if we look around ourselves we see that sometimes objects would be made up of more than one materials right now so objects can be sometimes made up of more than one material for example a stapler right or pencils etc like a pencil is made out of a or you is like wood or graphite is used in that the graphite lid is used in that like that after this we would be learning about the properties of the materials right now so thereby we would be learning about some properties like some of the materials are shinier some of them are not shinier some of them have dull appearance huh? and then we will be learning that some of them are very hard some of them are very soft some of them are soluble in water they would be mixing easily in water while some of them will not be easily mixing into water some of them will be heavier in respect to water some of them would be lighter in respect to water all those things we are going to learn in a minute both of you done do let me know once you guys yes. are done okay
by the way your vacations are going on right yes sir okay what was the last chapter finished in your schools in your schools uh uh just one minute sir okay Uh, so getting to know plans. Okay, that chapter is going on. Let me write that down. Sir, for us, uh, the last chapter was things around us already. Okay, okay. Yeah. Getting to know plants has been it's it's been going on, and for you, things around us that has been things finished or going on. Sir, uh, it has been finished. Okay, I was asking to Halima. Your yeah, Halima, what about you? The chapter things around us has been finished or going on? Sir, finished. Finished. Right now, which chapter has been started? Like right now, it's vacation now. By the way. Yes, sir. Okay. When your vacations are going to be over? Sir, in uh, August. Okay. Okay. In August. It's a lengthy vacation. Hmm. All of you done writing this? Sir, uh, uh, can you give me uh, some time? Okay, okay. Moments ago, we did learn that why. Uh, also, we uh, there's an important topic that is why do we need to group the different objects, right? So, in generally, in order to save the time, we have to group the objects to save our energy into mm -hmm. unnecessarily finding the objects whenever we need them, right? Now, also grouping of the objects makes the place look well arranged and beautiful, also, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, for the question, this is chapter number three, right? No, it's actually second chapter. No, sorting materials into groups. The third chapter, separation of substances. We have done that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Actually, there was there was a, a, a the thing was no that there was a chapter things around us. So it's removed from the updated syllabus. Hana, have a look at your book. I think you won't find that chapter in your textbook. If you have chapter things around us, if you are having the updated book, you might not be having that chapter in the book. I think. Uh, no, sir. Yeah. After this, uh, since Halima is writing, sir? so meanwhile, yes. My uh, did my mother send you the syllabus? Uh, your syllabus. Yeah. Uh, will I will have to have a look at it. I think I might have got it. Have you shared it to the team? You you have shared it to the team, now? Sir, I don't remember. Okay. Okay, I will check on it. Okay, okay. no. Meanwhile, uh, you guys give the next topic. Yeah, by the way, I have got your syllabus right now. Just now, check it. So I got... have, I have got your syllabus. Yeah, like you are getting the chapters, components of food, light. Then you have separation of substances also now, right? Separation of substances, yeah. things around us, magnets and its effects, right? Yeah. And then habitat and adaptation. Okay. So for some of the chapters. Uh, it would be done in the batch, while for others, uh, you'd be requiring a backup class. Okay. Next topic you guys would be giving after this. One minute. Sir, can Sir, you uh, get into the class in class, right? Sir, can you go to the writing part? I didn't finish. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Hana, we, Hana, we are going to do that chapter. Okay, no? Getting to know plants, no? You'd be learning yes. about that also. They would be learning about that plants are classified into different categories based on their height. You'd be having different kind of plants like herbs, shrubs, and trees. Based on whether they would be crawling on the ground or climbing, you'd be having creepers and climbers. Right now? Yes. Based on whether they would be bearing flowers or not, you'd be having flowering plants and non-flowering plants. Okay. Based on whether they would be uh, heterotrophic or autotrophic, you'd be having autotrophic plants and heterotrophic plants too. 
then you'd be learning about different parts of the plant also the shoot system the root system in the shoot system particularly you'd be learning about leaves different parts of the leaves like what is midrib huh? yes sir. what is what is lamina what is the vein of the leaves what are the two different types of veins that is parallel venation and reticulate venation I, all uh... those so before vacation, we had done an activity. We took a leaf, uh, mm -hmm. kept it under our notebooks, and we had to like shade it on top to get the you know the shape and everything of the leaf. Shape, particularly shape of the leaf and that of the veins also. Yeah. Yeah, good. Particularly, we can take the help. Uh, we would be required now. You, uh, you, you take you took the leaf of which plant for that purpose. Uh, sir, the teacher gave it to us. We were not sure which one it was. Okay, so it had a reticulate venation or parallel venation. Sir, for example, we can we can also do it with a coin also. As a kid, we used to do that. Okay, now <laughs> put behind the coin, uh, put the coin behind the paper, and we used to, used to rub the pencil over it, and you can yeah. get an imprint of it on the page. Okay, done, Halima. Yes, sir. Okay, give another topic. The next topic we'll be learning is that why do we need to group the objects? Okay, now. Why? why do we? Why do we need to, need to group the objects? Grow the objects. Group, group. G R O U P. Okay. Oh, group. Yeah, so we need to group the object for a variety of purpose right now. So, yes, for example, to save the uh, time, to keep it clean, clean. Mm -hmm. very good to keep the place clean. To save First, time, yeah, to save time to find the object. Oh, so that you don't have to waste lots of time into finding the objects so if they are well sorted and kept in right place your time would be saved. Furthermore, sir, it saves our... Yeah? To group the objects, we are uh, uh, always supposed to use a hand picking, right? Yeah, of course, majorly we have to use hand picking. But in, for example, in a factory, like where once all the waste goes into a factory, so thereby we have to separate, for example, there are two kinds of waste. One way, like in a waste, waste is consisting of mixtures of different things so in yeah. the waste you'd be having metallic objects also particularly magnetic objects also so by using an electromagnet there you have to use a crane right now so crane would be having electromagnet so there you can't use hand picking and go on to pick all the iron objects yourself or ourselves right now so there we have to take help of machines right so it differs it depends right now it depends so it saves our energy also. The third thing is that grouping or sorting the objects makes the place look well arranged and beautiful, right? So grouping makes the place well arranged and beautiful. Another thing is that also, when you group the objects into pro proper manner, right now, so that also, uh, it, like it is convenient, it is very convenient to store the things now. Like we often would be grouping objects in order to store similar kind of objects together. Like for example, in your pencil box, for example, in this you would be grouping all those objects that Sir, are useful for your study, like pencils, pencil sharpener. Pen uh, we use a uh, pencil clip, uh, ballpoint pen, stapler, scissor, rubber, hmm. and all. Exactly. Pencil so, sharpener also, books. Exactly. Not books. But... Not the book, not books. Right now. So basically, why you would be doing that? So that, like, you would be storing all those objects of the same use at one place. So you you would be conveniently storing it, and thereby you can. You don't have to waste your time in order the to find it. The important things will be in the uh, uh, one pouch and the rest mm. like highlighters and all color pencils in the other pouch. Exactly. That is the thing. And 
it would be easy to it would be easier to locate it and whenever you use need yes. it in future you don't have to find it here and there so another reason is for convenience to store also that is one thing furthermore like for example many times there are certain things that you are studying and all of them are sharing the same property same thing for example like for example uh, you are given different projects in your school so you are given mathematics project you are given biology project and physics project so you have to keep the files keep the uh, papers of those projects into different files now yeah right so that you would be able to study it properly and like, store it properly like example uh, when we get holiday assignments we'll get mm. for all the subjects so you have mm. to store it in a file where we can keep everything uh, you know like uh, arranged exactly right now so we also objects the we also group the objects so that it becomes easier for us to study them to study their features to study them and store them at one place okay now also like you would be required to draw different also diagrams also easier to or... find because uh, it will hmm. get scrambled right exactly right now also uh, you would be placing putting all the diagrams uh, at one place like that and the writing part is the other place yeah so another thing is for convenience to study also right so these are the general reasons why we need to group the objects okay now yes. so write down this yeah. one do let me know once you guys would be finished sir done all sir done done good next you'd be learning about classification then uh, were we supposed to write the uh, the diagram i mean the mind oh. map which you have done for the things no no not that, that one not that one okay no not required okay. right now you are learning about classification sir can i uh, take a screenshot for that yeah of course so moments ago before we were learning about why we need to group the objects into different groups we did learned about materials also yes, sir. right good so we did learn that the different objects around us are made from different materials like glass wood steel or leather or fiber etc furthermore we need to sort them into according to their uh, according to the similarities in their properties we need to group them for example you are having some objects for example that... classification of animals hmm classification of animals very good right now bacteria the... exactly there you would be so having we can study <clears throat> like how many animals are there exactly okay also classification of living organisms are done on different basis huh whether they are terrestrial or whether they are aquatic whether they are photosynthetic or are photosynthetic right they are herbivore or carnivores exactly so on different basis classification is done in the case of living organisms whether they are microscopic or whether you can Don't see with the bare eyes exactly okay na no? based on what kind of uh, uh, cells what kind they of have what they eat exactly what kind of food they eat right now based on their life span we can categorize them based on whether they would be laying eggs or whether they will not be laying the eggs sir based on their adaptations yeah you know, based on okay. not usually adaptation that is usually not take, seen as a classification basis they're but they're also yes, classified some, based on their looks on their looks yeah you can do that too okay na no? okay so that is also then right now we are in a general sense talking about classification of materials so different objects would be showing some common properties right now like either they would be made up of made out of the same materials right right either all of them would be showing the same shape or either the different objects would be having same uses or similar uses okay so you would be required to define this so classification is basically the process of sorting and grouping sorting means that once you had 
collected objects of similar kind of similar looks uh, or similar shape or similar materials used in them then you would be required to put them into like different when you groups. buy stationery for school uh, you sort them like you know <laughs> into different pouches so like you it'll be easier for you to find them exactly so that is called as sorting and then grouping it so the process of sorting and grouping materials according to some basic similarities basic similarity is called classification <clears throat> for example uh, based on the material used in them we can classify the objects into one category or based on the use they have right now we can classify them the furthermore you'd be writing that objects change the paragraph and then write objects can be classified on different basis that is based on their shape material use in them and uses etc write on this one this much okay <laughs> now another important question which well, we should be thinking of like we have talked about classification another important topic is, is that after basis what is written Uh, to some example. basic similarity example in this one yeah objects can be classified on different basis that is shape material used and uses etc the first paragraph is the process of sorting and grouping materials according to some basic similarity is called classification okay now also we know that there is going to be some basis of this grouping now based on some similarities or differences in the properties of different objects we are going to group them so shape not... material and shape material used u s e d used and uses okay <laughs> next we are going to learn about basis of grouping sir what is the meaning of uh, different varieties different its basis actually oh okay na b a s i s okay that is s yeah that is actually s oh okay. so talking about uh, basis of the grouping like what is the basis of grouping so materials can be grouped on the basis of either similarities that they have or differences that they show in their property okay na like in general some of the objects are going to be shinier uh, like for example all the metals like gold is like shiny diamond. diamond is shiny good okay na so we have some objects that diamond, have diamond uh, is shiny and also it is the hardest stone yeah it's the hardest stone very good okay na but diamond is no longer the hardest object on earth there are objects that are harder than diamond yes. also okay so talking about basis of grouping some of the objects would be shiny having a shiny appearance like this one like the gold is having a shiny appearance gold right that is one so of the basis of plus silver or um, steel is shiny steel is having a shiny appearance so that so is one of the basis of plus iron aluminum exactly all of them will also be counted in this in this two right now yeah. another basis of classification uh, of, of grouping i mean to say would be based on whether they are hard or whether they are soft hmm? then later on you will get to Sir, know what whether what is the subtopic what is the third subtopic the third subtopic third subtopic no, is fourth one fourth one 
Which one were you referring to? Like uh, the basis of. Basis of grouping. Okay. Okay, na. Okay. <clears throat> so whether a material would be uh, showing some similarities or differences in their property, whether they have same appearance, that is, all of them are. Lustrous have a shiny appearance, or whether all the objects are hard in nature, they are hard to touch, no, not easily breakable, or whether the given objects are soluble in water or not, whether the given objects are transparent or not, or uh, like uh, whether the given object would be attracted towards a magnet or not. So these are the general basis of grouping the objects into one group, into one category. You all getting it? What I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. So just for example, all the objects, like as as moments ago we did learn, like all the metals, particularly gold, copper, aluminium, iron, uh, all of them would be put into the uh, lustrous objects, the objects that have a shiny appearance, right now. All the objects, like we have different examples of objects like iron, wood, or a stone. Although they are different objects made up out of made out of different materials, but they have one common property, that is all of them are hard. So they are that is the basis of classifying them together, putting them into one group. Getting it now? Yes, sir. So that is the thing we are learning. So write now, write another paragraph. You will write down materials can be. Grouped on the basis of similarities. The appearance as well, right? Yeah. In example, we're going to write down. Okay, now. So on the basis of similarities, they share. For example, we have appearance. Okay. Or we have um hardness or softness. Texture. Texture, very good. Texture. Or uh, furthermore, solubility in water. Conductivity. Whether they would be good conductors of electricity and heat or bad conductors of electricity and heat, right? Or whether they are transparent or translucent or opaque. Whether they would allow the light to completely pass through them or partially pass through them or not at all. Or another property would be whether they get attracted towards the magnet or not. So last point is attraction towards magnet. It is continued from here. Okay, now attraction towards magnet. Write down this much first of all. <clears throat> Sir, there is some internet issue going on in my area. Okay, okay, no issue. So basically, you had to write down this paragraph. Okay, do let me know once you guys would be finished. Done, sir. Done? Yeah. Good. Okay, we'll be continuing from this topic in the next class. Right now, we are going to have some general discussions. Okay, now? Okay, uh, Halima, you also finished writing this. Okay, now? By the way, have you guys seen this tab? Yeah, I took a screenshot for this. I'll write it afterwards. Okay, good. Have you guys seen that at some places, at some places, two oceans will not be meeting? The waters of the What's two oceans that? will... At some places, we observe that the waters of two oceans will not be meeting together, and they they appear yes, to sir. be se separated from each other. Hmm? Why yeah. does why does that happen? 
ever thought about this hmm? although like like on our earth all the oceans have been given separate names but are there any actual border between the different oceans like is there any actual Sir? border between the indian ocean or pacific ocean or atlantic ocean is there Sir? any actual border yeah yes Halima? there is sir no there isn't any actual border like border is just like and maybe how... the skies or maybe the, the water of all these oceans maybe mm. they have a different type of you know texture or you know something like that maybe that's why they don't mix together exactly they're different, the... they're different in uh, you know appearance hardness softness texture everything no no usually the these kind of properties like hardness or softness generally in, in general sense um, it will not be usually associated with water although some water is hard and soft based on the type of salts present in them based whether they have calcium or magnesium salts present in them that's a different thing but basically they are two kind of water in the oceans one that is fresh water one that is salty water right now that's so, why these um, like uh, these two hmm. types of water is not mixed together exactly like whenever the uh, like the fresh water that is coming from the melting of the glaciers once once that water would be mixing with the salt water like when it comes in contact with the salt water so both of them have difference in their densities one contains salt so thereby it is highly dense den uh, dense another one does not contain salt so it is less dense so thereby they will not be meeting so it appears as if there's a boundary between the two but we haven't created any boundary between the two no it is just that they have different properties different density okay no? and they appear to be separating from each other getting it no? particularly you will observe this in the in in the gulf of gulf of alaska particularly you will observe this in gulf of alaska right or like basically where the atlantic and pacific oceans would be kind of meeting each other right now so because of the difference in their density the atlantic and pacific oceans usually do not appear to be mixing also both of them have different temperatures not just talking about the salt found in them their temperature is also different usually the at um water of the atlantic ocean i think it is usually warmer okay no warmer and more saltier while the water of the pacific has 